Well guys, we're about to do something that I honestly did not think we were going to make time for this year, and that's make some fresh pressed apple juice. It's exciting. Honestly, we are, what are we? November 3rd? We're November 3rd, and we had a huge frost last night. As you can see behind me, and I'll pan around here, there's nothing left on these trees, but I took the sheep back. They didn't really want to go, but I took them back into pasture one today, and I ran over trying to get them to follow me and found one tree and let's go check it out. Honestly, honestly, I never realized after frost apples were so good. This has dirt on it and I don't even care. It is. I wish I could share it with you. It's so good. All right, so Chris just panned down there and showed you what was at the top of this tree and kind of an idea of what was at the bottom. So the plan here is we're going to clean up the bottom. We're gonna take anything that's good, put it in a bucket, throw anything that is no good further away for the sheep to eat and munch on, and then we're gonna shake the tree because unfortunately one of the things about the apple trees on this property is they are all huge this tree has to be 22 feet tall i know that's really precise right but i'm pretty sure it's around 22 feet tall so when we shake it we're going to just gather them up and kind of go from there so let's get her done gonna go about our business <laughs> i'll be honest these are so good and we're so limited on apples for juice this time of year I'm not even going to worry if they're pretty dirty because we're going to get all these washed and uh, checked for worms, things like that, when we cut them up and get them ready to go through the press. So hopefully we can fill these buckets. All right, so that was really fast. I'm actually out of breath we picked so quickly. All the apples are off the ground. We got roughly, probably almost a five-gallon pail, if I'm being honest. They're kind of split up, but now it's the fun time. Let's shake the tree and see what happens. Yes, I know. We're gonna get bruises, things like that. These apples have a long way to fall, but there's too many up there to leave them. And I honestly think in two days, we've got 20 degree weather. The wasps are gonna come and they're all gonna be destroyed anyway. So let's get them. So Christopher's in there. He is in charge of shaking the tree. Let's see. Oh, listen to it. Not as many falling as I thought would, but That one's not getting results. I don't know if I can pick the big one. There's still so many up there. Oh, we're gonna have to break out the big guns. There's way too many branches up here. I told you we were breaking out the big guns. I'm gonna see if I can shake this. Chris, watch your head. Oh, now, ow! That's how you shake an apple tree. So I have to take a sustenance break, but we're gonna shake it one more time. I'm actually surprised I'm not a good tree climber. This is taking me back to my childhood for sure. Well, that was a bit of excitement. Now I'm really out of breath and there's still so many apples up there on the tree. But to be honest, we filled, I don't even know how much this is to be honest. It's probably about 40 pounds. And we still have those two buckets in the barn that we picked from our tiny gym tree a month ago now and they're holding really well because in the barn we've had decent weather to keep them in good shape so these are going in the barn for now because i still have to deal with all those peppers and i am not ready to make this juice but hopefully in two days time we're going to come back and continue this video so here you can see our two buckets that we already had of those tiny gym apples and this bucket is all the ones that we got off the ground they definitely need to be washed and here is our big bucket of the really nice apples. I mean, really nice apples. So we're the following weekend now and it is time to make this juice. I'm so excited about this because I really didn't think we were gonna get to it this year. So this is awesome. So we gotta get set up. That's the first step. You can probably see the kids behind me. We need to get the table set up, cutting boards, knives, buckets, and first step, setting up our press, the wood chipper, and washing apples. So here is my weird children prepping, faking, pretending to be cutting their apples already, but they're not ready yet. 
So some of you probably have seen this process before on our Hickory Croft Farm channel, but this is the first time, right Christopher, that we are sharing it here on Pantry Living. Pressing apples is something we've done since we moved to this property five years ago because we are lucky enough to have a lot of apple trees and a lot of apples. But I have to say, I think mid-November is probably the latest we've ever pushed it. So let's get going and see how many apples we've got to wash up. So like I said, first thing we need to do is wash all these gorgeous apples. We actually went out and we picked a few more today, even though I didn't feature it on our uh, video here. But washing these is uh, pretty important after they've been sitting around in the barn and also on the ground out in that pasture. So if you ever get a chance to pick up one of these old wine presses or fruit presses, boy oh boy does it come in handy. We lucked out on Kijiji and got two of them for a fantastic deal and they came with a ton of other stuff that we've never used. But these are worth their weight in gold for us. They've saved us so much money. I don't think we've bought apple juice in years, which is to some maybe not a huge feat, but to us it's awesome. So we're going to fill this up with our chopped up apples. And how do we chop them? Through our wood chipper. Now that the apples are washed, it's time for us to chop them. Now with a bigger chipper, you probably wouldn't need to chop them, but the main reason for it is the fact that they don't fit through the hole in the chipper if we don't. It also gives us a great opportunity to check them to make sure they're not wormy or anything. And you can see these ones are in fantastic condition for, what are we, the 10th of November? 9th of November? Look at that absolutely gorgeous apple. I almost feel bad using it for juice. I should have ate it. Just a brief little talk here. Look at these. We picked these little tiny Jim apples over a month ago and they've been sitting in the barn. Still relatively, really firm and gorgeous. Super pleased about that. And here we are. Apples are cut up. Look at that. All right, so now comes time to press. I did not get on here. Look at that, juice is already coming out. <gasps> but we're not even pressing yet. We're not even pressing. So basically it was pretty much to here full of apples. And now we zigzag these blocks on top because that just puts our press part higher up, which gives us more leverage. I say us, that's the royal us because who does it? Chris does. Look at that. Oh boy, that, ah, ah, not yet. Look at that. We haven't even pressed yet and it's already starting to trickle. And the monsters are already out with mugs yeah. to greedily steal our fresh pressed juice. Why do you do that? Because it tastes good. So there's the Jenga. And now is the time. Here it comes. Mm. All right, get in there. James? I'm sorry, I was just waiting for that to bring the thingy around. There we go. Really, really good. Okay, whoa, easy. It's really good. It's a bit chilly, so I wish it was like a cider. All. It almost tastes as if it were a cider. It's already. very sweet, is it? It has the color of cider, not like um, store-bought juice or something like that. It, so I don't know why, but it makes me feel like it tastes like cider instead. So there you can see the color under that uh, froth and foam that's coming that James is talking about. My turn. Mom's turn to taste test. Oh my gosh. It's good, right? Now this will send my blood sugars going through the roof. The one thing I will say that, like what James commented, it is darker than store-bought, but it's also not watered down like so many store-boughts are. Your turn. It's good. It's not super sweet. It's got it's... a little tart after, after taste, not an aftertaste, but it, it's got a green apple taste at the end. It's different than what we've made before, but it's very, very, very good. Starting to get a little harder. To the other side all right so now we're loosening up all that pressed apple pieces and getting that into storage here and we will be gradually feeding that to the livestock don't want to do it all in one uh, batch because it's got a lot of seeds in there so round one is done and now it's time for round two all right so as you can see chris has this filled to the top for our second round and our daylight is fading 
but this is awesome. He's giving that a press and I'm betting we're gonna start to see some juice here shortly. There, oh, I saw a drip. Honestly, I cannot express enough how wonderful home pressed apple juice is. If you haven't had an opportunity to try it, find one. Trust me, you will not want to go back to store-bought juice after this. And here we go with round two. First bit's a little boring. We'll just skip ahead now. Look at that. Liquid gold, right? So that's pretty much everything out of our second round. We had about seven liters in the first one, and I think we might be close to eight in this one, but it's pretty much pressed to the max now. So when we open this up, I'm going to show you just how much down in this uh, press it's gone. I know our light is fading, but I really wanted to show this to you. You can see we are basically below the halfway point there. That's a lot of pressing. All right, so we are back inside now, and boy, did we get a lot of juice. These two containers here are perfect. We have about 15 liters, maybe even more. And of course, I can only water bath can seven at a time. So I'm working in my Lee Valley pot here, and we've got seven liters on the go, and we're following my ball preserving book. Now this is what I've always used for canning my apple juice and it makes amazing apple juice. Not to be confused with apple cider. That's one thing that I went super wrong with when I first started doing apple juice was I boiled it. And once it was boiled, it tasted like cider. Now there's nothing wrong with cider if you like cider, but I don't like cider. So discovering this one, just 190 for five minutes, jar it up, get it in the water bath canner, get it done and out. It's wonderful. All right, so I skipped ahead a little bit and my pot of juice is already starting to warm up, but I do want to filter just a little bit more, which gives me a chance to show you the filtration process because I skipped that part. <laughs> so one pot here is directly from outside. Look at that gorgeous golden color. And I'm just running it through. This is just a nice fine sieve. It's not a funnel. It's just a strainer. <laughs> We're gonna go with that anyways. I'm gonna move that a little closer so I don't make a mess. And I just wanna make sure that I have that full seven liters in here. I don't want any chance of it not having enough. And then I'll filter the rest once I empty this pot and get it into the water bath canner. All right, so we've reached the sweet spot and I've turned it down. Now the tricky part is keeping it at that 185, 190 for the five minutes and not having it get too hot. You have to know your stove, that's for sure. But as soon as this has had its five minutes, our jars have been sterilized in the oven and they're still in there nice and hot. So we're going to get them out and jar it up. And then 10 minutes in the water bath canner, which I have warming up nicely here, because the one thing I will say is you want that water in the water bath canner hot and ready to boil because you don't want to leave this juice sitting in the water bath canner for a long time as well. Hot juice in the jars, hot water equals quick to get to that boiling so that that 10 minutes is just 10 minutes. All right, so we are just about to the top. You want to leave that half inch head space on these. But the nice thing is, because it's all pretty much liquid, there's no debubbling or anything like that. So we just wipe our rim, make sure, especially since apple juice can be sticky. Take one of our heated lids here. Oh, come on. They never work with the magnet. That ring on. And into the water bath canner, we're going to go. All right, so you might be able to hear it in our water bath canner, that sound of boiling jars. And our second batch is at 175, so we're almost up to that 190 that we need to be. I usually shut it off at 185 because it does creep a little bit. And we've got eight minutes left on these guys in here, so we should be perfectly timed to just roll in to the second batch, which is what I like because it's getting late. we got to make supper, and I want this juice done. Wow, guys, we're done. 14 jars, still a couple yet to uh, pop down and seal fully, but most of them have already gone really quick. Loving that we managed to get this done. It's late in the season, and I really did think we weren't going to get it done. And we managed to get apples from some really nice trees, which means this apple juice is going to have a little check mark on top for special occasions. But have no fear. Last year, we made 104 jars of apple juice, and I still have over 40 jars left of that. So 
Next year is going to have to be a big juicing year, but for now, I think we'll make it.